What's going on my broskies, my name is Toadski back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and in today's video we're going to be going through my teams that I used in order to take on Colosseum Riser. Now before we get into today's video, I've got to say this without a doubt, this is going to be the most difficult piece of Colosseum content that Global's had in a very long time. I think this is probably the most difficult piece of Colosseum content we've had thus far. He's extremely difficult. There are three mini bosses, including himself, uh, that you have to take on before you actually get your copy of Riser, and he's extremely, extremely difficult. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the teams that I used in order to beat them. And before we actually get into the teams, we're going to go ahead and start breaking down the Colosseum character as well. So hopefully you guys do go on to enjoy the video, and if you guys do make to smack the like button down below but without further ado let's get into today's video so Colosseum Riser is a 5 star unit and is a quick shooter free spirit type character and at max level at level 99 he has 2182 health 1399 attack and 322 recovery he has 40 cost and 5 socket spots which is actually pretty awesome for a free to play character his captain ability will reduce the cooldowns by 2 turns at the start of the fight and also give shooters a 2.5 times attack boost so this guy is a straight upgrade to raid boss Zephyr's captain ability. So if you guys don't have very good shooter captains, Ryzo is going to be your next best bet. He's actually got a really, really solid captain ability. So moving on to his special ability, it's actually a multi-staged special. And obviously, the higher the stage, the better ability you're going to get. But the main one that you want to be trying to aim for is going to be your stage 3 special, which maxes at 15 turns, meaning you do need 15 skill ups on Ryzo to max him out. But what he does is, he deals 11 times his attack in quick damage to all enemies. Then he will change recovery and tandem orbs on shooter characters into matching orbs. Then, if your captain is a shooter, he will go ahead and boost the attack against delayed enemies by 1.75 for one turn. Overall, an absolutely amazing unit, a must-have character for shooter-based teams, and this character partners really, really well with V2 Hancock as a captain, because V2 Hancock will delay, and also V2 Hancock treats all colored orbs as beneficial, and if you have Ryzo on your team, he will apply the conditional boost because your Hancock is delaying, and because Hancock, Hancock will only change colored orbs into matching, you have Ryzo to change all the other orbs that you get, either tandem or recovery, into matching orbs, which is fantastic. He partners so, so well with V2 Hancock, so make sure to go ahead and farm this guy up, because he is amazing for shooter-based teams, and he actually might help you against... Uh, uh, the Akainu Neo, if you need a little bit extra damage, he actually might be very, very useful for that as well. So, anyways, now that we've broken down the unit, let's go ahead and get straight into the teams for today's video. So, round number one is going to be against Monkey D. Luffy, but on stage four of the first round, you have to fight against Usopp and Frankie. Usopp has 410,000 health, Frankie has 570,000 health, and what will happen is, is, as a preemptive attack, Usopp will lock your bottom row for five turns and will blind you for three turns, whereas Frankie does 7,000 damage, and red, yellow, and purple orbs are counted as negative orbs for the next three turns. So, overall, they don't have much health, uh, so they are reasonably easy to take down, but then you go to Monkey D. Luffy, who has 2.8 million health, and he'll attack every two turns for about 9k damage. He has poison and delay invalid, and he will also boost his own attack and defense. And after the second turn, he will go ahead and apply a damage limiter where any damage above 200,000 is going to be cut. So ideally, you want to try and take him down before the second turn is activated. Also, don't get him below 20% as he does deal 55,000 damage to your crew. So make sure to not get him below 20% and kill him before the second turn to ideally get around his annoying damage limiter. And I'll see you guys on the second round of Colosseum Rizo. Round number two is going to be against Zoro and Law on stage five, but on stage four, you have to actually come up against Kanjuro. Now, Kanjuro has just over a million health, and he'll attack every turn for about six to seven thousand damage. He'll have a preemptive attack that will blow away a random unit for three turns, and also all of your specials will be rewinded for two turns as well. Under 50% 
he will actually go ahead and transfer all your orbs into negative and also lock your slots for two turns so ideally you don't want to do that uh, but what I would suggest is to wait until all of your characters are back and all your specials are ready to go and then burst him down he's only got a million health so he's very very easy to take down and then on the final stage is against Zora and Law. Zora has 1.7 million health and Law has 1.4 million health and the preemptive attack will go ahead and give themselves a debuff protector for 99 turns and also will go ahead and seal your specials for two turns so this is why we go ahead and bring Vanderdeck in on my specific team you don't have to you can bring characters like the uh, Nami or the rare recruit Rizo. there's lots of characters that can help you remove the special bind on your crew uh, also every two turns Law is going to recover 150,000 health and Zora will go ahead and recover his health as well and also will transfer your slots into empty orbs uh, don't get them below 30% though because Zora will actually buff his own attack for 99 turns so ideally you want to try and take him down in one turn this treasure mode mayhawk team is reasonably easy to build uh, but other than that i'll see you guys against Ryzo. So now we come up against Ryzo. So on stage three, you have a mini boss, which is going to be Inuarashi, and he has 2.55 million health, and he'll attack every two turns for just over 10,000 damage. His preemptive attack will make it so that you have 95% attack down for two turns, and he also has a delay protector for 99 turns. So he can be quite annoying to get around, especially because under 50%, he activates a counter, and he has a very significant damage reduction as well. Uh, for the for the next three turns and then under 30 percent is when he actually activates his counter uh, which will basically mean you're gonna die in most cases so don't get him below 50 percent i recommend getting him close to 50 and then bursting from there moving on though we have neko mamashi on stage number four now what neko does he has the same health amount and same attack value as inu Arashi on a two-turn cooldown except this time his preemptive attack will give himself a debuff protector and will go ahead and lock your chain for 1.01 for the next seven turns so this is going to be extremely annoying to get around and there aren't that many characters in the game that can remove this chain buff uh, you can potentially bring a character like Raid Hancock and then use her special before moving on into this room to make it so that you don't get given this debuff, which can technically work, although, uh, I don't know, it really depends on what team you're bringing, of course. Uh, but then what he'll also do is when he gets below 50%, he cuts your health by 90% and then will go ahead and invalid your recovery or make you get the anti-heal buff for 99 turns so you cannot heal and you're at 10% health which in most cases will be the end because you do have to deal with Colosseum Riser as well. Speaking of Riser, let's go ahead and talk about the final boss stage Colosseum Riser. So he will have 3.75 million health and he'll attack every turn for 7,300 damage. Now his preemptive attack will apply a barrier to himself which adds an additional health bar of 150,000 HP, very similar to Treasure Map Mihawk. Uh, he'll also go ahead and cancel all special effects. He'll also change all your orbs into negative bother orbs or block orbs or tandem orbs. And also he has a two turn debuff protector and he'll cut your health by 10% at the end of each turn for 99 turns. Uh, also, as I mentioned before, when he uh, goes ahead and changes your orbs into tandem, negative, or block, he actually does that at the end of every single turn as well. Also, he has a special interrupt. If you use a special that treats a certain orb as beneficial, or you activate an orb boost, he'll go ahead and cancel all special effects. All your specials will be sealed for 25 turns. He makes perfect harder to hit for a turn. You basically don't want to do that. Uh, make sure you don't, you don't use any of those specials that orb boost or count orbs as beneficial. Do not use those specials. Then, he actually does some pretty crazy stuff when he revives. So when you finish off Ryzer, he actually recovers with half of his health, and he'll also go ahead and call in five other Ryzo characters. The Ryzos that he calls in will all have a one-hit barrier at the start of the turn as well. Um, so one good way to get around this is, you know, obviously Legend Blackbeard, or using a special ability that does damage to all enemies, and then bring another AoE damage dealer will be a really good way to get around this. You see in this video, I use Magellan here. Magellan will only kill these guys, I believe, if you have him at max limit break and max attack candies. I'm not too sure if that is confirmed or not, uh, but some people were saying that that is the case. I don't think that is the case. I'm pretty sure you can go ahead and kill him with just a regular Magellan, uh, with a le regular Legend Magellan. I don't think it has to be max limit broken or anything like that. Uh, also, something to note as well, that you can actually go ahead and limit break Ryzo straight away. Is he worth limit breaking at the moment? I wouldn't really recommend it, but the option is open for you if you do want to. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video.
And if you guys have enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and smack the like button down below. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.